Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit, episode number 572, where Drew and I will go through comics originally releasing. Never, because we're still not ready for a release day, but by golly, Drew, we are getting so much closer. We have a return of an FOC, and we have new books on the horizon. Yeah, it's uh, like right around the corner, maybe. We got, things are going to get back into some semblance of normalcy, um, yeah. which is kind of cool. Uh, we heard... This little tidbit of news that um, uh, I follow Matt Kent on um, Twitter, and mm -hmm. someone asked him about Black Badge, uh, asking if it's been optioned. And he said, uh, "Yes, it has been optioned." He didn't say TV. He didn't say TV or film, but he said, "There's we're still waiting for an official announcement." But he's leaked that it that is going that it's been optioned. That is so good to hear because I have a super rare run of Black Bat. You have all the FOC exclusives, do you not? I do. Yeah, good call. So that should be fun, and that should be a nice mm -hmm. little spike there. Especially since this is like a pre-announcement pre because the yeah. official announcement hasn't come out. So you can go scramble, scrounge some of those up before everybody else hears about it. So mm -hmm. <coughs> that's good news. Um, some other r bit of return to normalcy news is uh, Diamond uh, went and punched back in and, and crunched some numbers and uh, sent out their their list of best sellers for March. And the good folks over at Comicron um, have uh, put together a preview of that top 10 um, and uh, the breakdown of sales again. So we're... We're in May, <laughs> officially, hey. but we're going to be looking at March numbers. Gotcha. So, um, first and I foremost... I remember no books. <laughs> what, what was that? I remember no books from March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll remind you. Um, but again, um, even, even though it was a very weird month, if you recall, about halfway through March, uh, comic shops started shutting down. Mm -hmm. So... A lot of these books were shipped, on to, yeah, shipped <laughs> to stores and probably not really, um, there was really no walking traffic to take any of these out. Um, so if it wasn't on a pull list, uh, it probably didn't exit the, the store, but at least in the latter half of the, of the month. Um, Marvel still uh, with nearly 50% at 46.76%. Of all the comics shipped to stores, so nearly half, um, Marvel did that. Uh, DC's at twenty-seven and a half percent, so another solid. So between the two of them, um, <coughs> three quarters of the market. Uh, Image at six percent, IDW at three point eight, Boom at three point two, Dark Horse uh, nearly two percent. Dynamite at 2%. Um, Viz, uh, well, about half a percent. Oni at 0.6. Valiant at 0.75. And everybody else at 6.7. So, some things never change. No matter if pandemic be yeah, damned. Say, regardless of yeah. pandemic. Um, so, March, uh, as compared to February, which February is a crappy month, as you recall. Um, yes, always. March is down. Down below February's numbers, so it was uh, okay. just a couple of points below. Uh, March of this year versus last year uh, was down 6.5%. Um, hmm. If you recall, that was Detective 1000 ah, okay. last gotcha, year, gotcha, gotcha. so we didn't have that big, monstrous title in the mix, um, so there's some reason, I guess. <coughs> oh, and a pandemic. We had we didn't have a pandemic last year. Um, <laughs> so year to date this year versus year to date last year, um, down about four and a half percent in comic shit. That's disorders. I mean for what it could have been. Could shutting so much stuff down and so many cautious people. Yeah, um, it's not as bad as what it will be in April. Because <laughs> oh. April will be a goose egg. Yeah, pretty much. Shipped. Pretty much. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, what topped what topped the um, top ten? Spider Woman number one. 
Uh, oh, that was our number one book? That was the number one book. Okay. Uh, followed by Flash 750. Okay. So a nice milestone book and an $8 book. Uh, Thor, number four. X-Men, number eight. Uh, Wolverine, number two. Strange Academy, number one. Uh, Batman, number 90, the 399 version. Uh, X-Men, number nine. Immortal Hulk 33, and rounding out the top 10, Batman 91, the standard 399A version. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So we've got um, seven Marvel, three DC. Do you have any idea how many of those would be over 100,000 in your mind? Maybe one. I don't think Flash Flash seven fifty at an eight hundred dollar or an eight dollar book. Yeah. So did that do a hundred thousand? There's no way. Yeah, it's not a it's not a it's not a detective <coughs> one thousand or a action one thousand. Um I'm not seeing Thor four doing that either. Uh, we already had Wonder Woman's milestone book and it was it was in the eighties and nineties, wasn't it? I think you're right. I don't think it exceeded it either, so yeah, so in Spider Woman, I almost want to say it's not under, but it had a ton of covers, and people have been reaching for those. There was some high variants on Spider Woman, yeah. if I remember correctly. So Spider so Woman's the only one over a hundred thousand in your estimation? Yeah, it, probably one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty-five, one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty-five. All right. Uh, as we look at uh, just because of all these cra- all the crazy uh, variants and stuff of it. Oh yeah, I think it was there were tons of tons of versions of that. Uh, the graphic novels for the month. Uh, Once in Future, Volume 1, shipped and debuted at number one from Boom, along with Something is Killing Children, Volume 1, from also from Boom. So that was uh, the top two best-selling trades for the month, which I think... Hooray for Boom? Yeah, it was a really nice splash for Boom. Uh, then we have Immortal Hulk, Volume 6, DC Superhero Girls, still selling well. <clears throat> and that thing crushes in the scholastic market. I, yes, it does. Uh, Superhero Girls is on is on every Scholastic uh, bring home paper for, and, and sells very very well through that market. And I'm guessing Amazon and Barnes and Noble, etc. Um, History of the Marvel Universe Treasury Edition uh, was number five, and uh, <coughs> which we put together multiple versions of that run in floppies. Oh, yeah. Um, over oh, the yeah. years, those, those were those were fun. Uh, New Mutants at uh, six, uh, King Thor at uh, seven, uh, the Oracle Code at uh, number eight. Which is that what is it? the Oracle Code? I think that is a um, OGN of uh, oh, okay. a, a Batgirl OGN. Uh, Star Wars uh, Volume Thirteen: Rogues and Rebels. And rounding out the top ten, Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons two. Nice. Painscape. Um, Marvel did uh, their damage with ninety nine shipping ninety nine comics. Um, thirty eight trades for one hundred thirty seven items. Uh, DC did their damage with eighty three. Some of those being uh, B covers, um, so not quite uh, as many. 24 trades for 107 items. IDW shipped uh, the third most with 36 comics, 16 trades. Image did 39 and 11. Um, IDW shipping more than Image. There was yeah, a time they shipped, I wouldn't have ever thought of it. Yeah, it was... Um, yeah, and I think it's all in the comics area where they're really dropping. No, trades were really down too. They only shipped 11 trades, so... Um, they just just don't have the the, the horses anymore. Um, yeah. Speaking of horses, Dark Horse shipped 19 <laughs> and uh, 25 trades. Uh, Boom did 22 and 9 uh, for 31 total. Dynamite did 21 and 1, just one trade from Dynamite. Uh, then Oni did 11, 6 comics and 5 trades. Biz did just 10 trades. Uh, Valiant did six uh, floppies and two trades. And uh, that took care of almost 
everything. Then we had uh, everybody else that shipped the remaining. So we had a total shipped of 471 comics, nearly 300, uh, 297 trades, 16 magazines uh, for a total of 784 items in March if you wanted to read everything. Um, good luck to you if you could have done that. <laughs> And had you known that April would look like it would have, you probably would have wanted to read everything. Yes, so check back uh, next episode for uh, more, the, the complete uh, breakdown of sales numbers, and we'll see how close Kyle was on his guesses. There you go. Uh, we have... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, we have an FOC. Do you have that FOC email from... Eric up. I do, I do. Of course, the FOC is the final order of cutoff. It's our last opportunity to add to our order to take things away. Um, sometimes we get to see some finalized art on some things. It's just kind of a, hey, you might have missed this on previews, and you still have the opportunity through some local comic book shops. Uh, we are very blessed to have Eric at Calabunga, who sends us a curated list um, that we can go through. Those are due by midday Monday if we want to add or do anything modifying our order. Um, Eric also pulls a few items to the top as he does it, the things that his customers are interested in. The first thing he's pulled up is uh, Birds of Prey, number one from DC Comics, Brian Azzarello writing that. That is a $10 book. Of course, you're getting a nice little discount with that if you're pre-ordering it. Um, that is DC Black Label as well on that one. So hopefully we get some a uh, little more darker Birds of Prey on that one. Yvette Leviathan Checkmate, number one of a six-issue series by Bendis for DC Comics. Um, the Ludocrats, number one of a five-issue series um, for Image. Karen Gillan and Jib Rosignal doing the writing on that one. And we have Jeff Stokely art on that one. Looks kind of very much um, almost in the styles of... Uh, Scotty Young kind of thing. Oh, okay. And from Marvel, we have Star Wars Dr. Aphra, number one, Alyssa Wong writing that one. So not only does Dr. Aphra have the legs to be a standout character, she is getting a second series. I am shocked at this, but actually happy to see it. And no Ashley Witter cover on that, on that Dr. Aphra. No Ashley Witter cover. We're getting a different representation of Aphra at the moment. But there's a lot more things offered on the SFOC other than the things that Eric has pointed out. And Drew and I are going to dig through and see what we can find. Um, these are going to be products that are going to be available to purchase um, as early as the 20th of May. And as late as some of them aren't even coming out until August on this. Um, but some of these you're doing the FOC for here at the end of this month. Which, that's, a, that, that's a quick turnaround, right? That's faster than normal. Three weeks? Uh, we've seen three weeks before. Okay, okay. But, yeah. So let's start at the top with some Dark Horse books. Bang's getting a third print. And I did enjoy um, that book. The I read the first two. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Your boy, Matt Kent. Yeah. My boy, Matt Kent. And the final <coughs> issue of Kill Whitey Donovan. So they That's did all a, I got in Dark Horse? Yeah. As you go down to uh, to DC there, um, which Birds of Prey did he select? Did he do an A or the variant? It was the A, if I remember. Let me double check. Birds of Prey. Number one. Yeah, just cover A. Ray McCarthy would be cool. It's because the J. Scott Campbell is the variant. Ooh, yes. That might be worth 10 bucks right there. In a nice, thick, prestige format, one to get signed. Yeah, that's dope. I love that cover. It's $10? Ah, that's a tough one. This tough sell, but if that's if you're selling anything, that's one to sell. It's not 10 in the... Okay, with discount, I get you. Yeah. So they're launching number one as a nine ninety nine book. Was this a one shot? I mean, well, we're 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 Black Series, so Black Series is the 
oversized, normally a three issue run or something. I don't know what the run's going to be on this or if it's going to be a one shot. Oh, uh, okay. It's a black label. Yep. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. I'll allow it. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. And then, of course, we have Catwoman's 80th anniversary coming out uh, that first week in June. Uh, and you have your final ability to pick some of your dope covers on that one. We got all kinds of them. We went through those when we talked about uh, our previews last time we went through. Uh, maybe we, maybe it was a previous FOC. Is that possible? Yeah, it's everything's possible at this time. I'm just yeah, trying to I mean, catch up. I, I mean, I, I can't tell if we're repeating ourselves from an FOC or from a sneak peek because, well, all those have been canceled, so it doesn't matter. I just remember us talking about how wonderful we have all the banger artists on this cat one. We got the Adam Q Hughes, the J. Scott Campbell, yeah. Frank Cho. Yeah, it is the pretty Art solid. Germ. Yeah. And you should get them all. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you if you have the means, it is so choice. Yeah. Event Leviathan. And a very neat Brian Hitch cover B on that as well. Okay, remind when did when did Nightwing Year One happen? Oh, okay, it happened within the Nightwing series issues yeah, one hundred and one to one hundred six. I don't think I read that. Oh yeah, that's Chuck Dixon. I bet that's good. Mm -hmm. That's the old blue suit. Disco Nightwing. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that's pretty darn good. Yeah. Back when he and Batwoman were, or Batgirl were, uh, you know, having a good old time. Anything else in DC there? No, not really. Nope, nothing else. Let's head on down to IDW. Any of these Clone Wars new? They're telling old stories. Um, looks like probably telling things directly <coughs> from the Clone Wars cartoon. Gotcha. Um, Commander Cody, Captain Rex. Looks like they're just swapping more stories that feature your favorite characters from the Clone Wars animated series. So yeah, they're referencing Clone Wars series, so I assume these are just print versions of some of those Clone Wars cartoons. Yeah, nothing else for me in IDW. Yeah, me either. Let's head on down to Image. And there, there is the McKelvey Ludocrats that he oh, he mentioned the Stokely, I think. Yeah, I don't know, like uh, Jamie McKelvey. Uh, I'd be a little more interested in the McKelvey myself, and I'm also interested in the Deadly Class Forty Four. This is not the end, is it? we I know we're getting close. Yeah. End of the story arc, but not the end of the series. Okay. Same so, thing with Outcast 45. We are ending, but we are not at the end yet. Yeah, that sucks, man. When you're when it's the the last issue of the story arc and it, you got this huge delay. Mhm. Mm At least not your fault this time. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You finally get your crap together and whoops. Mm -hmm. All right, and down into Marvel. Talked about Dr. Afra. And there's that Lots Avengers. Of covers for Venom 25. We're going hard in the paint with some of these um, for just, I mean, 25 is the new 50, I guess. <laughs> and I get a chance to get that um, Avengers that I, that I wanted. I almost missed. That's the Moon Knight storyline yes 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 absolutely so, absolutely lucky me i get to pick that up i didn't miss it after all i'm happy about that but this uh this venom 25 is an oversized uh, finale of venom island issue oh 25 so, is so that's why it's a six dollar book with uh, a multi a multitude of variants
black blank variant is four hundred dollars. Why? Um, Sketches. Because you know what's, what's crazy? It's a four hundred dollar cover, and it is so hard to get nine point eight out of full black covers. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's that's a tough sell for anybody in my mind. That one. Yeah. No, this is the first time we're seeing this Doctor Afro number one. Are we seeing it? We're seeing it again, right? We're seeing it again. Yeah, we talked about it before. <coughs> I don't think I looked at the cover B. Yeah, very nice. The P the B is a very nice cover B. Yeah, absolutely. That's Rem Valentina Reminar. Yeah, that's not bad. All right. And, of course, Year Zero, who... And that is... That's uh, right. Year Zero is the big one. That's the one we've picked a couple times for our pick of the week. Um, oh, yeah, that's the AWA. Artists, writers, and artisans. Yeah. Say what? Yeah, a AWA, yeah, you're right. And that was a that was probably our last sneak peek pick of the week, right? Mm -hmm. Before the yeah. world ended. Yeah, and we weren't looking at the cover B. I, I'm a big fan of the cover A, but boy, am I liking the cover B as well. Cover B's not bad. Cover B. Dio, Mike A's Dio Dada. Yeah, but A is just where it's at. And then. Um, Ghosted in L.A. is now a 12-issue miniseries. I don't think it always was. Um, it's uh, Sin of Grace doing the writing on that. It's really good. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's really a fun series. Um, what was it again? Ghosted, Ghosted in L.A. Ghosted in LA. Yeah. Another boom book. <laughs> and, um, you know, I never, I've never, i never lived in L.A., you know, um, but, like, in, in the back matter he, he like profiles different parts of LA or um like the best burger in LA and he has a bunch of places where you can get a really good burger and, and the, or I was like the best uh dessert place and then, you know profile that or the best comic shop and he'll profile that or the best music store and it's just little snippets of life in LA and and the the cool things that are in there it, it's really a fun little uh back matter series that he's doing in the back of this um but it's this is a fun fun series overall and um looks like it's gonna be like 10 11 12 that's all we got left yep get the final um Mirka undolfo on sacred book i think I think it's just a five issue series, but maybe it's not. It doesn't say five of five, does it? Doesn't on that. So what is that bottom variant? Tons of red Sonya. My God. Nice little cheesecake cover at the end. Is that the Lisner? The cover D Andolfo Cat Angelica. You're still up in um, in Dolpha? Yep. Okay. Because I was talking about all the covers for Red Sonia. Oh. Well, we see that all the time. <laughs> this many for an issue 15? Have you seen this many covers for an issue 15? That is quite a few. Do we have our... There's our cosplay. We always have a cosplay. I bet it's tw I bet it's twenty five covers. It's nuts. Yeah, it's a lot. But hey, um, if you're gonna do something, do it well. Yeah. And they're gonna do Red Sonia and all that, and they're gonna do it well. We got Dead Day from uh, AfterShock. Uh, Frank of Via Francisco. Francesco Francovia on um, doing the cover, but it's a Ryan Parrott uh, book. Looks pretty good. Heck yeah. I don't know what he's done. He's done Oberon, Volition, and Power Rangers, so it's nothing that I've read. 
I don't think I might have read Volition. I'm not 100% sure on that. And then we have uh, Disaster Inc., number one from Aftershock as well. This is Joe, ha Joe Harris and uh, Cully Hammer doing the cover with Sebastian Perez. Um, looks okay. It doesn't look as good as uh, Dead Day, I don't think. I was going to say, if you're going to pick one of the two of those, this isn't my pick. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with the other one, yeah, for sure. And then I think that might be it. I don't know. Did you see anything else? That is all for me as well. So, sweet that the old FOC is back. Doubly sweet that I could get my Moon Knight cover, Avengers 33. I didn't miss out on that. That makes me happy. There you go. Um, so, yay. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are already on the list and you've been receiving uh, emails from Eric. Um, yeah, this will be your first one in a while, so good times. We're happy about that. I wonder if we get. I need to send Eric a note and see if I've got that year zero coming in or not. It's so long ago, I just can't remember. Oh, okay. Um, I thought it was our what was a bundle at one point, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I thought it was an RC four fat, but I just again just <coughs> seems like a a, a different time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I should be able to tell us too if it's on one of our order forms. And you should be able to tell us by the order forms that you've sent. Yep. <laughs> but it's easier just to tell it to say, Eric, can you check? <laughs> uh, it's so well, sad. Well by 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 uh by checking and then having the uh provision in there, if not go ahead and order it, I'm both checking and being in by the, the on time. Because sometimes if I'm like, oh, I'll check, and then I check, and I'm like, oh, crap, it's past midday on Monday. True, true. Yes, and since we're a day late on this, you only have one day to um, look at the FOC, make your decision, and get it in. Exactly. In time. <coughs> uh, we got some news from Marvel that uh, they are going to resume their shipping May 27th. So DC... Um, shipped this week right i think so or is shipping this week yeah a very small or man no, i don't think it's this week a sample is it this week or is it next week i can't remember but dc shipping a, a, a small batch um and then marvel's going to sometime in may and then so and marvel's coming in and shipping uh, starting their shipping on may 27th so which is uh, that? That's where we saw that Venom twenty five. Uh, mm -hmm. So that so that's good to see um, that the May is uh, going. Things are going to get going and uh, get back in in the swing of things. That's that's really cool. And we may have some comics in our hands before it's all said and done. It's gonna be May. <laughs> We've got uh, the good folks over at Cover Price. Uh, doing their top 10 and runners-up for eBay Hot Sellers again. And this is for uh, the week of April 27th. So it's the one that we're still in. There you go. And we have, uh, topping the list, Justice League Dark number one. Um, there's rumors of a new Justice League Dark on-screen appearance, which costs 31 copies of this to sell. For a raw price of twenty nine bucks, um, pretty cool. Uh, I know I was pretty high on Dust Justice League Dark when it first came out, so I'm thinking I got mm -hmm. some of these sitting around, but probably not a lot of them. But that would, I think, Justice League Dark would be a really cool on screen. Uh, yes. it would be a cool movie. I completely agree. Uh, Philadelphia number one. This is the local comic shop day uh, variant. Uh, the official announcement drove up interest. Hopefully you were locked and loaded because I think this got options as well. Uh, 13 copies sold for an average price of about $12. Uh, it's officially optioned for something. I don't know if it's a TV or movie. 
Um, does it matter anymore? I mean, everything. <laughs> it's all, if it's Netflix, yeah. it's kind of the same thing, right? Uh, kill it, so it, the, both the LCSD version and the the cover A, which is the one I have, uh, mm-hmm. which sold twenty seven copies, but only for about six bucks. So just a, a little bit over double cover, or not hold quite. Hold on to them. Hold on. Yeah. So hold, hold. Uh, we've got Swamp Thing number fifty, which is the first appearance of Justice League Dark. Uh, and it sold 19 copies for an average price of 20 bucks a piece. Um, that one, I wonder how many, how hard that one is to find. Probably not that well. I mean, you'd have to be able to get yeah. into a comic shop now, but that might be a good one. Uh, the Infinity Gauntlet number one, the classic series 18 copies of this one continues to sell for about 50 bucks a piece you know how many copies of this i've had in my hand for 25 30 bucks and i've always put back down this thing spikes hard i'm gonna be so mad i yeah. always i always say i don't need it i mean yeah, i think with the movies in the key and i think it's a key i think it's a you know it's a modern key forever and we'll just yeah. continue to rise up now we're over 50 dollars now mm-hmm. um well, it's a wall book now. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a wall book and a key, um, uh, just because of the, the 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 just the way that Marvel pulled off the movie so well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Doorway to Nightmare number one. More Justice League Dark movement. First appearance of Madame Xanadu is in here. Fourteen copies sold for about eighteen dollars a piece. Um, still seeing Year of the Villain Hell Arisen number three for the punchline appearance. 35 copies of this one moving at $32 a piece. Uh, Something is Killing Children, number one. The Jenny Frizen cover. Uh, boom, Netflix deal on that. Uh, 20 copies moving for about $12 a piece. Uh, Bone Parish, you know, Colin, Colin Bunn's Bone Parish. Another Netflix deal. Uh, 21 copies for about 16 bucks a piece. And this is, I think, I think I set this one out because I was like, yeah, there's always good bun and bad bun. You never know what you're going to get. Oops. True. Oops, I missed. Turns out he was, every, he was every other. This was a good bun. This was a good bun. Uh, X Men Avengers, Adventures number one, uh, based on the uh, 90s cartoon. I did not like the cover of this at all, so I steered way clear. But now it's. Ah, this is a quarter buck. I'm sure I got it in that quarter box. I know I picked up a few. This is getting. Um, uh, a Disney Plus relaunch. Uh, 16 copies sold, but only for about 6 bucks. And I was thinking this... <coughs> I didn't I didn't think this was that old. 92. Is it? Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is probably something we l- looked over multiple times then. Yeah. Um... If we take a look at the runners up, I don't suppose you have that up, do you? I do. Uh, take right, it. I did. I'm, my voice is. I'm losing my voice. Can you take that one? I can. So the rubber, runners up actually start with something pretty awesome. Uh, Redneck number one from Image Comics. Nice. Uh, recent comment from Donny Cates alluding to that he sold something set fans directly to Redneck. While still very unconfirmed, it sold 16 copies, had a seven-day trend, spiking 172% up, with a high of 65 bucks for a CGC 9.8 and 22 bucks for all. And I still have my C2E2 foil variant that I have not taken out of the packaging because I was too lazy to put it up for some odd reason when I bought it. What was the what was the Donny Cates that blew up a while ago because of rumors? Wasn't that Redneck? No. Must have been something else. I mm, can't remember. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. He's had quite a bit of stuff. $22 raw, that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, we're still on the Batman 89. Still following the punchline stuff. We talked uh, last week about Spider-Man 2099, number one. It is still rocking. Still moving good there. Um... At number 14, we have Marvel Premiere, number one from 1972. Rumors are swirling that we might see Warlock in the near future, who is first named 
as Warlock in this issue. This isn't the first time this rumor has swirled. Back in the Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, we, we talked about his cocoon and some stuff like that. But always a possibility. Wait a minute. It sold 14 copies and one of them sold for $840? Yep. Jesus. Yeah. And that wasn't even so. that wasn't even slabbed. Yeah, <coughs> apparently not. Dang. Adam Warlock. You never know. We have Spawn Batman number one. I have several of these from 1994. Uh, not really sure why this is going up, but we're guessing some folks just wanted to read this fun little mashup. So third, 13 copies was a high sale of 50 for a CGC 9.6. Wow. Uh, of course, Spawn Point Spawn Number One continues to sell. It was the 16th ranked moving comic, uh, CGC 9.8 for almost 110 bucks. X Men Annual 14 for appearance of Gambit via his cameo, not his, uh, of course, more modern appear or more well known first appearance. But uh, if you're looking for Gambit stuff, there's a cheap way to do it here. But not very cheap anymore because it sold a CGC 9.8. It sold for 157 bucks. Of course, Ultimate Fallout 4, which is our Miles Morales, continues to do great. Uh, New Mutants, number one. Uh, from 1983. The roller coaster of this film's release is as crazy as this movie might be. Um, hopefully, we'll get it out soon. This thing's had, I think, the date pushed on it seven times now. Uh, but a CGC 9.8 selling for almost 100 bucks, And, of course, Something is Killing the Children, number one. 33 bucks for a raw copy. Uh, moving 10 copies this week. I, um, I have a couple of New Mutants, number one. I don't think either of them are a 9.8. Should I get one slabbed anyway? <sighs> yeah, by the time you get it back, this movie might be out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, so you said something is filming children too. That's doing really well. Yeah. Shh, Thirty-two bucks, man. I got a sell line. I think that's prob that's probably as high as it needs to go for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I gotta get that. Uh, I gotta see what that redneck number one chromium's going for. Oh, now where did you get that? C two two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Now we um we don't quite have the sneak peek yet, but we are still do looking at our. <coughs> this is was this March for May releases, mm -hmm. yep. which um are not really May releases. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. <laughs> I'm not sure. <coughs> um, but I think we left off. We left off in DC, so we can pick up there. Yep, we're going to do the big two today. And we're going to look at things that hopefully uh, will just keep you caught up. So when these things finally do hit, um, you'll know quite a bit of what we're talking about. And it'll be an easy thing to be like, ah, this is what I need. This is what I want. Yeah. This is what's coming out. Now, this Batman The Adventures for B Adventures Continue was a digital first, correct? Mm-hmm. Now it's getting the print treatment. And we got another uh, bite at the apple for the metal series. So we're going Dark Knight's Death Metal number one. Yeah. Um, so that's is that Snyder and Capullo back together again? Uh, Capullo on covers, but not internal art. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. And we have Dreaming Waking Hours number one. Another it's a Sandman property. Yeah, another Sandman property. Generation 1, which is the march toward DC's future beginning here by an all-star team of writers and artists. In May, DC launches a series, well, in theory, in May, <laughs> uh, launches a series of special one-shots that detail the history of the DC Universe, starting with the debut of Wonder Woman, DC's first superhero, and leading all the way to the bold new era, unlike anything you've seen before. Um... It starts on Free Comic Day with Generation Zero and continues in May with Generation One. Well, that didn't happen either. Mm -mm. Free Comic Book Day was today, right? Yeah. 
and so that got canceled so where's that book gonna go hmm so all this is up in the air um <coughs> you know were these gonna lead to 5g back in the day maybe it's very possible hmm who knows how they're gonna yeah you know, who knows juggle things now I mean, the stuff is obviously already in the can, I'm guessing, so it's going to come out, but is it still going to be part of the same sequence? I hope so. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, the Secret History of the Manhunters. Uh, it's a five-issue miniseries. This is kind of springing forth from the uh, Leviathan mm -hmm. series. Which we don't have. <laughs> well, we, do, we got the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have that, that new one yet. We've got a Joker War, Joker War, and Batgirl Forty Seven. So that's probably going to be a hot one. That will be a big one. Yeah. Very cool. We don't know the uh, Terry Dodson cover. <coughs> Well, the cover A is pretty dope too. Got some friend, some Matina uh, cardstock B covers for the Man Batman ninety four. Ninety five Matina. That's just a, that's a poster, man. Look at that. Well, the A's ain't too shabby, man. Did, did you see this Matina? Yeah. That's so good. It's pretty good. <laughs> I'll give you that. It's just pretty good. It is ninety ninety four has got one of the more striking um, covers of Punchline, too. Cause 90, really? Yeah, because we've heard 92 was not supposed to release until June. So, mm -hmm. if, that, if that tells you, anyway, this is 94, so where does that put it? Yeah. Um, we have Batman the Smile Killer. Because we had Remember? Killer Smile already. Oh, I gotcha. Batman's Grave is on number seven of that twelve issue series. Got more death metal covers. There's an art germ. Matina. David Finch. And a Wu Chow Lee cover on this Batwoman twenty three is the B is really good. He does good work. He or she, I don't know who this is. What is it? Catwoman twenty three? Catwoman twenty three Wu Chow Lee variant. Very nice. And are they, so there hasn't been enough great Catwoman covers to talk about because we had all the 80th stuff. Now that, but that's not going to be a cardstock B cover, so they're going to keep it at 399. Correct. So some B covers are going to be the same price and therefore counted by Diamond as the same sales, and not a separate skew, right? Sure. <laughs> it changes so much. I don't even know anymore. Yeah. All right, and more of these Dark Knights death metal. We have the additional covers down here. Um, David Finch Batman variant cover, uh, which has the Batman riding a bone-crusted motorcycle with a scythe. If you need things more metal than that, I don't think my heart can take it. <laughs> There's a Superman variant with the obnoxiously long-haired hippie... Uh, Half dead version of Superman on it, and Art Germ doing the Wonder Woman cloaked in fire, wielding a chainsaw kind of sword. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now we have. I don't even know the Midnight Release cover. <laughs> so, so now we have something called DC Classics. Um, it's not the DC Dollar Book. It's not a facsimile, and so it's priced somewhere in the middle. It's a dollar ninety nine. <laughs> um, I don't know that it probably doesn't replicate. If it's not facsimile, it probably doesn't replicate the ads of that time or era. 
Correct. It's just a regular reprint. Regular. I was going to say it's a reprint. It's considered a reprint. It's just a reprint. Okay. And it's... Um, so, if it's number one in that series, that means we're going to get the first Harley reprinted as well, right? When oh. We get to 12. Yes, we are then. Yeah. Um, so, when we get to... When we get to 12... Uh, hop on. But we've it. already had a facsimile. Yeah, we've already had some bites at that apple, but I don't know that we've ever had a reprint straight up. I don't know. It, it's tough. But I think we've had. I think we've had a dollar version too, haven't we? Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. But that might have been. I don't know if I have them in my hot little hands. So that might have been before. <laughs> the world ended. I don't know. I don't know. And then as you scan down, we get down to the dollar comics. There are still dollar comics. So we're doing the reprints, dollar comics, and facsimiles. Um, and they're reprinting uh, Dark Knight's Metal already for a, bu for a buck. Because why not? Uh, Green Lantern... 29 from 2008. Uh, it's a secret origin. Uh, Manhunter number one from 2004. And this was the first Kate Spencer, I think, as Manhunter. Okay. Uh, Star and Stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripe from number one. Number one um, from whenever. Uh, Wonder Woman 14. This is about the circle. Wonder Woman 206, uh, Medusa Returns, I'm not, this is part of her, the Greg Rucka return, mm -hmm. and Wonder Woman 212, it's another day, uh, Greg Rucka, so yeah. interesting selection of dollar comics. Yeah. Your that Sinkovich cover of that dream, uh, dreaming waking hours number one makes it look much more interesting. Yeah, and it's it's not just the old standard murky cover from Sink Sinkovich. It's, uh, it's it's pretty nice. Yeah, some serious detail in it. Got Mateo Scalera doing a flash cover, which is very nice for seven fifty five. Genlock number seven, the end of Genlock. We do have a facsimile of the Green Lantern number 76. Um, this is when the the Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams team up of Green yeah. Lantern, Green Arrow stuff, which was very great. and Not quite the junkie cover, but in that same. Not, not quite the junkie cover, yeah. <coughs> I'm holding out for that one. So now we have the 80th anniversary of Green Lantern with a bunch of great homages. A bunch of great covers with a bunch of different lanterns, but man, I'm not interested in a single one of them. Not a single one. I mean, I like this 1940s one here. Nicola Scott. It's cool looking. I just... Like, with me, I'm like, man, you should probably get all those Catwoman ones. And with this, I'm probably like, nah. Eh. You don't need to get any of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten bucks, you know. That blank green, that's pretty cool looking. <laughs> you like the blank green one. I, I, I do. Guess. That's awesome. I really do. Frank Cho, Harley Quinn, 73 cover. Of course, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Clay Man on a Justice League, 46. That's fantastic. Penultimate issue of Lois Lane. Oh, nice. 11. Lola Woods is ending. And Joel Jones doing a Lois Lane cover. That's very nice. 
Yeah. Man bat number one. They're trying again with man bat. They don't try as often as they do with Moon Knight. They were in Marvel. So Dave Maybe Man Bat is their Moon Knight. <laughs> Dave Wheel Ghost. W I E L G O S Z. How do you say that? Where are we at? Man Bat number one. Dave Wheel Goes. Alright. I've never heard of him as as a writer, but we shall see. For years, Kirk Langstrom has struggled with his monstrous alter ego, Man Bat, and serum that transformed him. But he's finally hit rock bottom following a devastating setback, and he's going to take out his anger on every single citizen of Gotham City. Will the combined might of Batman and the GCPD be enough to stop Langstrom once and for all, or will this be the start of Man Bat's devastation? Yeah. Five issues seems like about the right amount of issues for a man bad story. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My damn pins. Holy not right. crap! Plunge number four. That's a scary cover B. Is that the Gary and, Frank? Oh man! Yeah, I'm never reading that in my life. No. <laughs> Get it away. It's pretty wicked. Uh, Deadpool and the uh, out, or I'm sorry, Red Hulk, Hood and the Outlaws covers there. Not too shabby. shabby. He can't talk all of a sudden. Having a small stroke. And you also have a penultimate Jimmy Olsen. So it's 11 of 12 on that one. Yeah. Derek Chu with an excellent Supergirl 42 cover. Now this, uh, <clears throat> the facsimile edition, 1987 Wonder Woman, is uh, one of the comics that I had signed by George Perez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, one of my, one, it's a classic one. And it was an original Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. That is a good cover. All right. That'd be all for us in D.C., at least for me. Yes. Let's head on down see what Marvel has. I'm sure they got all now, did kinds we, did of Did we do Dynamite there. last time, or was Dynamite there in the way? No, we did it. The, we, 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 the, we did it. We saved the big two for this one. Okay, so we skipped that and then went to Marvel. I'm not there yet. Where the hell are they? Did I miss Marvel? You went right past that, I'm guessing. No, it, it did disappear. Where is, where is Marvel? Because uh, I had it here, I clicked on it, and then half the books weren't there, and I expand er, and I refreshed, and it's gone. That's funny. How about if I go back up and do the drop down and just select Marvel for March and see what happens? Nothing! They've already yanked it. Yeah. Huh. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do you want to do dynamite or <laughs> do you want to do dynamite or not? Let's just do this one. I, I like to do a dynamite in with the the other the back half stuff okay. next week. All right. So <laughs> okay. So now we need to go back then, and now I need to um, refocus my efforts because if we're just doing DC, uh, I need to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, it's that Batman cover B from uh, uh, what's his face. Arg again. The Matina? Yeah. It's just too good of a cover. Cannot help myself. Uh, I'm stuck between the death metal art germ and the death metal Matina. I think... 
I think I'll go with the, the art germ. What do you think? Heck yeah. That's, so what did you pick? I picked... Batman, Batman. 45? Or 95? Yeah. 95B? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so some things are back to normal and some things are not. <laughs> some things are so crazy. <coughs> some things are not at all. <coughs> Good stuff. All right, brother, anything else? Yeah, no, it'll do it. All right, well, thank you once again for tagging along with Drew and myself as we try to find some normal things to do as we hopefully come to the end of the comics blockading of COVID-19 and get back to some more stuff. We've seen our first FOC released. Uh, we've seen uh, dates for books to get back to normal for hopefully things to be able to open and hopefully everybody to continue to stay safe. And we thank you guys so much for that. Uh, we appreciate your listening and being part of the podcast. Feel free to write us in with any questions, comments, or concerns either on the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the Twitters, uh, or drop us line on our Gmail account. Uh, we really appreciate you guys, and thank you so much. So for Drew and for myself, see you.